Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, My British Supply. If you like this, subscribe to us, we'd appreciate that. Do go to our website, especially My British Supply. We have lots of wonderful products invented, patented, and used by us. If they want, if we don't use them, they're not on our site. Okay, number seven in a 12 part series. Um, we have handled blues last time. Today we're going to talk about chocolate. Okay, so chocolate is a little bit different because there's two variations of chocolate and I have some videos specifically just dealing with chocolate, but we're going to talk about chocolate again here. So there are two flavors of chocolate. There is little b, little b, and we call this testable chocolate. And this is the one that is responsible for making the Isabella version. Isabella. <clears throat> there used to, there is another version of chocolate that we used to call untestable chocolate, of which the majority of Frenchies that are, are chocolate dogs have this version. And we used to call it untestable, but it's now called cocoa. And it'll be a little CO, little CO will be the results. And this one is the cocoa gene, cocoa, the cocoa gene. And we used to call that untestable though. And so you've got to be a little careful here when you look at genetics, because if you look at my website, a lot of these dogs have been called little b, little b. I need to go in there and correct all that because now we have a different version. So we now have the ability to test for this. Um, so they both produce chocolate dogs, but they don't mix together. You cannot put a testable dog with a cocoa dog and get chocolates out of it. You'll get dogs that are carrier for both, but are not either chocolate or, 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 or cocoa dogs. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So let's just do a Punnett square and just look a little bit about how this works. Okay. Now these are all recessive genes. You've got to have two copies of testable chocolate to produce a chocolate dog. So we're going to take a true chocolate dog, testable chocolate dog, and we're going to put that with a dog that is a chocolate carrier. What do we get? So here's our Punnett square. And there's the results. Half the dogs are chocolate. Half the dogs are chocolate carriers. So, how can you tell if you've got a chocolate dog? Well, it can be difficult because a brindle dog can look like a chocolate dog. But there is one thing that you always see in both chocolate testables and cocoa dogs. Their eyes glow red in a video taken in a completely dark room. You can't take a snapshot picture with your flash on. It will not, it will give you unreliable results. And if the dog has just had its eyes open at just two weeks old, again, you're going to get unreliable results. The, the eye glow, if you take a dog that's six months or a year, or two, five years old, and you put that into a completely dark room, turn on the light on your video phone, your smartphone, take a video, you will absolutely see this absolutely red demonic look in their dog's eyes. And what you'll see is if you look at the eye, here, here's, here's, this is the eye. <clears throat> and here's the pupil in the middle. It'll be this pupil in the middle that will look red. That's the part that will look red. Absolutely center. It absolutely looks like the devil dog. I mean, it's, when you see it, you will absolutely know what you're looking at. What other colors will you see? Well, you might see blues. You might see greens. You might see turquoise, you might see purple, none of it counts. That is not what we're looking for. We, and you may see flashes of red that are kind of artifacts. If this dog is a chocolate dog, you will see a solid red look on that dog's eyes and it will be absolutely obvious and it won't be fleeting. But again, you may not see that when the dog's eyes first open. And for the first six weeks, it may not be particularly convincing. One thing that you can do is if you've got a litter of dogs where you expect half the dogs have got chocolate and half them don't, put all the dogs together and look and see what you see some difference between the dogs. Because the ones that look, it, it, it's more of a burgundy color when they first start out. It's, it's not so convincing. It's harder to see it. But, but 
but with some ex experience and being able to compare it with dogs that you know aren't um, chocolate dogs, you'll get an idea about what you're looking for. And also, it's better when you look at a dog that's looking off to the side, not straight at you. It, it, it shows up better for whatever reason that is, I don't know, but it definitely works that way. All right, let's get some of this off the board. Um, okay. So now I want to talk about uh, these two different versions of chocolate. And, and by the way, of course, um, the Punnett square works exactly the same way for you know, any of these genes, including the Coco gene. So we'll just do a quick Coco gene Punnett square, just for the heck of it. And let's wipe it off a little bit so it's dry. Otherwise the felt pen doesn't work with the diddly. <clears throat> okay. That. So let's look at the Punnett square for a cocoa dog. Here's our Punnett square. And let's take a dog, let's take two dogs, one of which, both of which are carriers. That's all they are, they're carriers. They don't show the red eye glow. And by the way, that's another interesting thing. If, to see the red eye glow, you have to have two copies of both reset, of the recessive gene. It won't show up. Neither of these dogs I'm showing up here. They're both chocolate carriers. Neither of these dogs will have red eye glow. But what do we get? We get this one here, which is nothing to do with chocolate. We get this one here that is a chocolate carrier. We get this one here that is a chocolate carrier. And there is our chocolate dog right there. That dog has a red eye glow. There it is. One quarter. One quarter of that pairing ends up being chocolate. One quarter of it has nothing to do with chocolate. And one half of the chocolate carriers. Okay. All right, let's get rid of that. So, two versions of chocolate, and how do they mix together? Well, they don't. But you can have a dog that does have both copies, and that is then called new shade chocolate, and they're rare. So what is the prevalence of these two different versions of chocolate? And I think the, I don't know the exact numbers on it, but I can tell you from my experience, probably one in 10, 10% of chocolate dogs are testable and 90% are probably the cocoa version, which is formerly the untestable version. That's a guess. I don't know that it's, I don't know if I can, you know, I don't have any, just, I can just tell you, you know, I've, I've got 20 stud dogs and I've got two of them that, uh, carry uh, testable chocolate, so that would hold true for me. Okay, so what is the new shade? Well, there is a difference in these colors, and because the part of the problem is if you look at a chocolate dog, you can get a whole range of colors from uh, chocolate fawns down to really dark chocolates and anything in between. And some of these other genes that we talk about do affect the, the variation in the color of the chocolate gets. So you can have a litter where you get fawns, chocolates that don't even look very chocolate at all, all the way through uh, um, really dark chocolates. Um, so there is this thing called new shade. There's this new shade chocolate. What the heck is that? Well, that is a dog that is both Little B, Little B, the Isabella testable version of chocolate, and Little C.O., Little C.O., what we formerly called the untestable. If a dog has both copies, two copies of both of those, that then becomes what we call New Shade. And it's a lighter color. It's more of a milk cho chocolate color, in my experience. That's a rare dog. Those are far and few between. People are trying to breed them uh, because they are rare. But that dog can be put with a chocolate, can be put with a testable chocolate dog and make testable chocolates, or can be put with the cocoa dog and make uh, um, uh, untestable or cocoa chocolates too. So two variations of chocolate, but you can't, and that's just one last part about this, you cannot take a dog that's a carrier of both. Well, let's just do this. So, so the question becomes, what happens? So we know what happens if you put a dog, two dogs together that both have both versions of chocolate, all the puppies end up being new shade chocolates. What happens if you mate together a dog that is chocolate, and we'll put the other dog down below. So this is dog number one on top, dog number two below. And we're gonna put that dog with that dog. 
And then we're going to put this dog with this dog. So what we're talking about here is they're both chocolate dogs, right? These are both chocolate dogs. This guy here, this is, this is the testable chocolate. That's a testable right there. And this is Coco, what we used to call untestable. We put those two dogs together. And, and what do we get? What do we get when we make them? Well, the answer is, is all the puppies end up being that. They are testable chocolate carriers. And all the dogs are that. They are cocoa carriers. And none of the puppies are chocolate. You don't get any chocolate puppies. So you've got to be careful about this. You need to know what you're doing here. Because if you go spend big money on a testable chocolate dog, you've got to make sure you breed that with the right dog to get chocolate. Because obviously you want to get chocolates out of it. You better be putting it with a testable chocolate dog. You can't just put it with any run-of-the-mill chocolate dog because you're not going to get chocolates out of it. You're going to be really disappointed. You're going to get dogs that aren't chocolate. They will carry both versions, but they will not be chocolate. Their genotype will be chocolate and chocolate, uh, but their phenotype or physical appearance will not be chocolate. Okay, I think we've got rid of chocolates now. So I think that one we can just take off the board. And next stop is lilacs. Um, again, subscribe to us. Check out our website. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.